Right, so let us just recall uh, we were looking at a uh, set of real numbers which is a complete ordered field. So, on R there is addition, there is multiplication and there is an order and the completeness meant uh, there is R has L u b or G L B property. Right. So, every non empty subset of the real line which is bounded above has got a least upper bound and similarly, every non empty subset which is bounded below has got greatest lower bound. So, that is called the L u B property and that is what makes it a complete uh, ordered field. Right. So, um, we were also looking at uh, the notion of convergence of sequences. I just wanted to for the completeness sake wanted to say that for every x belonging to R, the order gives rise to a notion of a distance. So, we define what is called the absolute value of x to be equal to x if x is bigger than or equal to 0 minus x if x is less than or equal to 0. So, this is called uh, this is called absolute value of of x and uh, geometrically it signifies the distance of the point x. So, this is 0 if you look at the geometric representation x could be here or x could be here right. So, either way this distance is mod x. Okay. Uh, there are some obvious properties which uh, you would have come across, but anyway in case not you should revise those properties. One absolute value of x is always bigger than or equal to 0. It is 0 if and only if x is 0. So, that is uh, positive definite. Then second is alpha times x absolute value is mod alpha times mod x for every alpha and x belonging to real line. Right? So, this is how absolute value behaves with respect to multiplication okay? and the third how it behaves with respect to addition. So, x plus y is not equal to it is at the most best possible is uh, mod x plus mod y. So, it can be equal to sometimes, but not always for for every x and y belonging to r. Fourth, this you might not have come across, but try to prove it mod x minus mod y is less than or equal to mod of x minus y. So, here is something if you have not come across, check it why it is so. So, the, all these are useful properties. Uh, so, let us uh, go over to we were looking at sequences. So, we looked at a sequence a n we said is convergent if there exists some value call it L such that the distance between a and n L or you can say that approximation a n is an approximation to L can be made small for what such that this distance can be made small for what epsilon such that whatever epsilon I give you I should be able to for all n bigger than some n naught and what is n naught there exists a stage n naught such that this happens. So, think it as a n is an approximation for L and absolute value of a n minus L is the error that you are making and that error you should be able to make it as small as you want depending on how large n is. That should be for all 
n bigger than or equal to n naught. So, we looked at some examples. Uh, let us look at one example was that uh, the sequence minus 1 to over n is not convergent, right? Because it only occupies the place 1 or minus 1. Not only it occupies only these places, but occupies very frequently every alternate times. Second, we looked at the sequence n is not convergent. Right, so it doesn't come closer to any value. It keeps on become bigger and bigger. Let us look at another one. So this is equivalent to saying if I look at the sequence one over n, both are consequences, and in fact equal to what is called the Archimedean property mm, is convergent, <coughs> and the value is zero. Let us look at one more probably before we go ahead. Let us look at uh, slight variation of the above minus 1 by n raised to power n, n bigger than or equal to 1. Right? So, it is the same sequence 1 over n, but now I am allowing it to fluctuate. Right? So, n equal to 1, the value is equal to minus 1 half minus 1 by 3 and so on, but still you can see that it is coming closer and closer to 0. So, one can try to prove it is convergent. So, try write a proof, try to write a proof of this. Okay. So, we will see what what is important, what is not important. Let us look at 5, Okay. let us look at the sequence n over n plus 1. Let us look at this sequence. See, in all the above sequences, let us just observe a few things that this sequence was not convergent, the first one, because it was fluctuating, right? Because it was fluctuating at 1 and minus 1. This was not convergent because it was, in some sense, not bounded, right? You cannot put some bounds that it remains between some kind of barriers. This is convergent to 0, we could look at n is becoming larger, so 1 over n is becoming smaller, something similar here. But in this thing, uh, if you think of n is becoming larger, but n plus 1 also is becoming larger, right? both are becoming larger and larger. So, it is not very straightforward to guess that whether it is convergent or not convergent. But you can think of that this, the, in some sense n is increasing and n plus 1, they are increasing at some same rate kind of a thing. right? So, what do you expect? You expect that probably it should converge right? at the same rate, so they should cancel out. right? For n large, the rate should become same of the ratio should become same and that should mean it should converge to 1. right? So, that is a guess. That is how you guess a result. Now, try to prove it. So, let us look at uh, n over n plus 1. right? So, uh, here is uh, where your uh, thinking will come into picture. If it is 1 over n, I can do something. right? Numerator is n, denominator is n plus 1. Let us try to make it is same. So, I write this as n plus 1 minus 1 divided by, right. And why I am doing that? The reason is this. So, that will make it equal to 1 minus 1 over n plus 1, right. So, that essentially looks like saying that it is a constant minus something and that something is becoming smaller and smaller, right. So, you guess that this converges to 1. So, converges to 1. So, let us write a proof of that. So, let us look at a n minus 1. right? So, what is that? That is n over n plus 1 minus 1, a n minus l. 
I want to make it small. So what is that equal to? So let us simplify n minus n plus one divided by n plus one, right? And that is nothing but so it is one over n plus one, right? Is it okay? And that I can make it small. So give for every epsilon bigger than zero, I can find n naught. Say that one over n naught plus one is less than epsilon, right? So that will write. So we can write. So this will imply uh, that for every n bigger than n naught, one over n plus one, right? If uh, n is bigger than one over that is less than one over n naught plus one. Right, so that is uh, n is bigger, so n naught plus one uh, n is bigger. So I'm just trying to write this thing for every n bigger than n naught. This also holds, right? Is that okay? Right. So let us not spend time on that. We write it. You try to see something that this was convergent, right? And that meant that the terms of the sequence are one. 1 by 2, 1 by 3, and 0. So everything lies between 1 and 0. This was also convergent. So that also lies between minus 1 and 0. Okay. This is also convergent to 1. So it lies. Everything is non-negative. So between 0 and 1. So it seems to say if something is convergent, that should be bounded. Right. So what does that mean? So let us make it precise. That is sequence A n. So we'll say a sequence A n is said to be bounded if there exists some alpha belonging to R such that mod of A n is less than alpha for every n bigger than or equal. Right, all the terms lie between some barriers. Okay, so that is bounded. So this is called bounded. So we should have a theorem based on our experience of earlier results that if A n is convergent, Then it is also bounded. So let us prove. So what do we want to do? You are given it is convergent. So what is given? There exists some number L belonging to R such that for every Epsilon bigger than zero, there exists some n naught such that mod of a n minus l is less than epsilon for every n bigger than n naught. Right? That is convergence. So let us try to draw a picture of this. This is my l. This is l minus epsilon, and this is l plus epsilon. And what is this condition saying? That a n lies here. A n naught lies here. A n naught plus one. That lies somewhere here. So let us just probably. So this is this, this point, this point, and so on. So for every n bigger than n naught, everything else is. So what is outside this interval? What terms of the sequence are outside? Possibly, possibly we don't know. Some of them may be inside. A one may be inside, it may be outside, right? A two and so on up to A n naught minus one, they can be out, they can be in. So maybe A one is here, A two is here, A three is here, and so on. So in any case, there are only finitely many of them which are outside, right? So let us look at the smallest of A one, A two up to A n naught minus one and L minus epsilon right there are only finitely many so let us write alpha equal to minimum of a1 a2 
a and not minus 1, these possibly can be out, maybe on the left, maybe on the right, and but remaining all are inside L minus, they are bigger than L minus epsilon. So, let us call this alpha and similarly look at on the right side, some of them can go beyond L plus epsilon, but at only finitely many of them. So, let us pick up the largest of them. So, let us call it beta equal to maximum of a 1, a 2, a n naught minus 1 and L plus epsilon. Right? So, then what should happen? So, then alpha is less than or equal to a n is less than or beta for every n bigger than n 1. Is that okay? So everything else bigger than n naught is inside, right? The finitely many which can go out or in, we have taken the smallest and the largest. So, so in the picture, if you look at it, so this will look like here is probably my alpha, and here is something like beta, right? And what is alpha? Alpha is the minimum, and beta is the maximum of this finite number of things, right? whichever is the largest pick up that. So, that implies, so this implies a n is is it clear that why this implies a n is bounded? See our definition was something slightly different we said bounded when mod of a n is less than, but here I am saying a n is between alpha and beta, but that does not matter right. I can always have a number if you like say that alpha and beta lie between minus of that number and plus of that number. So, mod of the a n will be between is ok clear or you can pick up whichever alpha is mod alpha is bigger or mod beta is bigger. Right, then all a n will be less mod a n will be less than or equal to that mod of that number. Right. So, both are equivalent ways of saying saying that a n bounded is this or all the a n's lie between some alpha and beta the two statements are equivalent ways of saying a n is bounded. Okay. Right. So, what we have said is if see now this is what is important is if is convergent then it is bounded. That means, boundedness is a necessary condition for a sequence to be convergent. Boundedness is a necessary condition for a sequence to be convergent. So, if I given a sequence, the first thing I should look at is whether it is bounded or not. If it is not bounded, then it is not going to be convergent. So, problem is over. If it is bounded, then I will go ahead. Right. So, all necessary conditions are useful in verifying something is not true. Right. If sequence is not bounded, then it cannot be convergent. So, that is the reason. In your calculus, you might have come across a statement, probably we will prove it again later on, that uh, you have done calculus local maxima, local minima of functions. If a function is differentiable at a point and that point is a local maxima, then derivative must be equal to 0. That is also a necessary condition that for a differentiable function, if it is a point of local maxima or minima, the derivative is 0. That means, at that point the tangent should be horizontal. right? So, that is why when you want to analyze local maxima minima of functions, what you do? You first look at derivative if possible derivative equal to 0, right. That is why that theorem comes that those are possible points where local maxima minima can occur. So, necessary conditions are useful things, right, even though they give something negative, right, it is not true. So, the same way a n is convergent implies a n is bounded. So, not bounded will mean it is not convergent. So, that could be the reason for example, you can look at that sequence. This is not convergent because it is not bounded. 
you can say that way or right so uh, but this this one is bounded but not convergent so converse of the statement is not true a sequence may be bounded but may not be convergent and this is obvious example of that okay so let us keep that in mind and go ahead now how does one try to analyze whether a sequence is convergent or not are there any tools one is obviously that if it is not bounded not convergent so that is one of them right other possible tools are what are called algebra of limits of sequences we will not prove all of them uh, we will just indicate uh, so that helps in uh, analyzing limits so so let us write theorem let a n b n be sequences so okay such that let us write the conditions here also such that i, I most sometimes i'll just write it is equal this way b n converges to m so this means the sequence a n is convergent and the limit is l sequence b n is convergent and the limit is something m right then the following hold one see given a sequence an that is a number bn is a number right so you can add nth terms of the two sequences so you can form a new sequence which is an plus bn so that is a new sequence so the theorem says if an converges to l bn converges to m then this must converge to l plus m so this is algebra we are adding sequences if you are adding sequences algebra says you should be able to subtract also so minus that also holds okay <coughs> can i multiply yes why not a and b n nth terms you multiply so let us follow our notation that this one converges to uh, l and we have written it as l so a product of limits is uh, limit of the product is equal to product of the limits you can interchange the two right limit of a product of sequences is nothing but the product of the limits provided both converge right difference subtraction all are okay you can okay uh, let us look at uh, what about division i want to say that an divided by bn converges to l by m i want to say that not possible right always because obvious thing can go wrong m could be zero so l by m doesn't make sense so let us write condition if m is not equal to zero at least then l by m makes sense okay no but if m is not zero what can i say about bn because i am going to define an by bn for that also all should also be not zero right or at least from some stage onwards they should not be zero because i am looking at the convergence so i am looking at only at the tail of the sequence so i should be able to say that bns are not zero if m is not zero from some stage onwards can i say that yes we can do that then let us write bn is not zero for every n bigger than n not and so i'll indicate why it is so because that is an important thing right i'll i'll just indicate the proofs and that will help you to understand why and how we are doing things so first one i want to look at an plus bn i know an converges to l bm converges to m so this sum minus l plus m 
I should be able to make it small, right? But what do I know? I know something about a n minus l. I know something about b n minus m. So I should separate them out if possible, somehow or the other. So this is what you want to reach somewhere. Keep the target in mind, and somehow you have to go in that direction. That is how problem solving and writing a proof means, right? Not by hook or crook, by by logical reasoning. Okay. So this one. i can try to write at least an minus l plus bn minus m right and then these two i know that i can say something about them and now here comes the triangle inequality it says this is less than or equal to y plus bn minus m so that makes everything work right even with a negative sign same thing will work Let us look at the product. What is happening over the product? I'm just trying to indicate how the proof should go. I have to look at a n, b n minus l m. Now, once again, I know only that mod of a n minus l can be small. Mod of b n minus m can be small. So, how do I separate out those things now? Here, a n is multiplied by b n. so i have to do some kind of manipulation to separate out so let us write this is equal to an bn i want an minus l so let us add bn minus l and add that also add and subtract and minus l m right so i have not changed anything only i have added and subtracted this because then i can take out bn out and i'll have something an minus l so my target is in mind what is it so this is uh, b n a n minus l plus l into b n minus m right now at least i can separate out and worry about it so mod of b n mod of a n minus l plus mod of l into mod of b n minus m so at least i have separated out right it is something like if you have a 200 rupee note and you want to pay somebody 10 rupees so you have to get a change right you should have that denomination with you otherwise you can't pay same way i want to use mod an minus l mod b n minus l right somehow i have to bring in those things in my analysis right so now i know that this will become smaller in intuitively this goes to zero this goes to zero multiply something with constant and that is going to zero so that will also will go to zero is it okay for everybody now here is the problem this bn may not go to zero or bn is not a constant as n changes i know bn multiplied by something is zero but this bn is not zero yes so here comes that if i can say it remains between a constant right it doesn't blow up it doesn't become infinite kind of a thing so boundedness so it is less than or equal to some bound so let us call it is alpha times an minus l where here i am using the fact right the remaining thing so here one is using that fact that if a sequence is convergent then it is bounded right and everything is coming out naturally that requirement is coming keeping what i have in mind and what i where i want to reach so this will go so this will be the second part proof essentially let us look at the third part so we are saying that bn converges to m which is not equal to zero right so let us draw a picture here is zero and limit is either here or here either m is here or m is here on the left or on the right we don't know where positive or negative it doesn't matter but we know that bm is going to converge right so it is going to come closer to the limit eventually after some stage onwards the tail should be near the limit so and i want to avoid 
So let us take this neighborhood if it is on the right hand side. So take a neighborhood that means what m minus epsilon and m plus. So choose epsilon such that m minus epsilon is strictly bigger than 0. I can do that because convergence is for every epsilon something happens. So a tail will come inside now, a tail will come inside now here, right. That means all the Bn's after some stage will be bigger than 0 if m is bigger than 0. Is it clear? So that is the idea of limit. Limit is not evaluating at a point, it says what is the behavior of the tail of something. So that is precisely being used here that if the limit is positive, then the tail of the sequence will be positive right? for some tail and if it is negative then the some tail similarly you can go on this side also. right? So a n by b n will be defined and then again you have to manipulate a n by b n minus l by m l c m and do some kind of things, arrange those things. right? Okay. So do that. Uh, by the way, as far as the examination is concerned, this will not be asked, the proof, okay? but try to understand what is happening. Try to write out a proof yourself that will help you to understand mathematics behind this. Okay? Do not worry about exams too much, try to understand things. So what we are saying is, here are the, uh, what this is called the algebra of limits. Why algebra? Because I am adding, I am subtracting, I am multiplying, I am dividing. That is what algebra is. Right? So it says essentially that, so this, can, this helps now. How does it help? It helps in analyzing limits of sequences because given is a n, I can break it into probably smaller parts which are either addition of something or multiplication of something or like that. For example, let us write some example of this, why it is useful. Uh, 